This problem is, of course, not just a British one. It was faced some time ago in the United States, where a married couple called Junior Davis and Mary Sue Davis sought fertility treatment in the 1980s, and they had their embryos frozen. In 1989, they divorced, but the status of the embryos was unclear because the United States has no law, as we do, about written consent and storage. It's left to each clinic to decide what to do. And this couple had made no agreement with the clinic or each other. Mary Sue, who, like Natalie, would not have any other opportunity to have her own child, wanted to be allowed to use the embryos and claimed property ownership in them. Junior, her husband, was also adamantly opposed to single parenthood of any child of his, just like Howard. The United States courts interpreted the right of privacy and autonomy in the Constitution to pronounce that it was up to the couple to decide on the fate of their embryos. There was, they said, a right to procreate and a right not to. <laughs> By this time, Mary Sue was prepared to donate the embryos to another couple, and it was held that her interests would suffer less harm than his if his veto was determinative. In other words, he could say, no, you can't use them for reproduction. Avoidance of procreation was favoured, where the other party could still achieve parenthood by other means. Had Mary Sue wanted to use the embryos herself, the outcome might have been different. But the judgment in that case was an alarm signal to clinics to ensure that comprehensive written agreements were in place at every treatment. A well-known case judgment which has gone the other way is the Israeli case of Nachmani and Nachmani in um, a few years ago. I've got the reference, PD 54661. The Israeli Supreme Court ruled that in similar circumstances, frozen embryos, woman has cancer, man changes his mind. In Israel, they said the right of a woman to be a parent outweighed the husband's right not to be a parent. Ruthie Nachmani wanted to use a surrogate for the frozen embryos created by her and her ex-husband Daniel, as she was incapable of pregnancy herself due to illness. So, like Mary Sue Davis, she wouldn't herself bear the child. She was at that stage looking for a surrogate. And as far as I know, no child was ever born, although she won the case and her rights prevailed. The judgment says a great deal about the pro-natalist policy of Israel and the position of women. Here is one situation where the stereotyping of women may work to their advantage. 